regards to him or about his talk, his ID is G Fletchy, F L E T C H Y. Okay. Graham has served in education as a classroom teacher, a math coach, and currently as a math specialist. He is continue, continually seeking new and innovative ways to support students and teachers in their development of conceptual understanding in elementary mathematics. His talk today is titled, All I Really Need to Know, I Learned from the MIT Boss. Not really, but close. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you grand pleasure. So I'm um, very excited to be here, to be amongst uh, my kin, my friends, uh, lots of you meeting a lot of new people for the first time uh, today, yesterday, and then also uh, on Wednesday as well. And so before I start, I definitely want to say, I know Lisa just a uh, big shout out to uh, Holy Innocence Episcopal School, but I don't think it can go unnoticed the amount of work that Lisa and the entire committee do tirelessly over and over. all together here. So before I get started, I, uh, I live here in Atlanta, Georgia. And so uh, if you're new to Atlanta, this is the first time you've come to our uh, nice, cool um, state <laughs> here uh, in, in what's soon to be August, and it does get hotter than, than this right now. Uh, I just want to give you some insight. So, but I also want to give my, uh, my Canadian friends uh, some insight. So although I live in Georgia, you won't hear me say words like fixin', reckon, yonder, y'all. Uh, you're gonna hear a lot of A's, and if you heard uh, when Dave was just talking, it was nice to hear that someone in the room actually talks like me. So that made me feel uh, really welcome. But, um, so here's some things you need to know. Um, no matter what people down here tell you, they will tell you that grits taste as good as porridge, or they taste the same. They don't. There are two things that are completely different. The next thing you might need to know is, uh, you see that we get a lot of rain down here in Georgia. Lots and lots and lots of rain. Um, and so, don't worry, uh, this thing doesn't bite. It's not a snake, it's a worm. And we're at a math conference. And because we're at a math conference, we walk around with Unifix cubes in our hand. And so, turn and talk to the person that's next to you. How many Unifix cubes long is this uh, worm snake, non-venomous worm snake? So, here we go. Uh, you're now committed. You share. There's going to be a lot of uh, opportunities for you to commit yourself today. Uh, if you pick 19, raise your hand for me. If you think it's about 19, you're wrong. Uh, so don't worry about 19. The answer is 22. Uh, yeah, that thing could feed a great white shark. Uh, but this is this is a this is kind of a task that we might do with uh, kindergarten students uh, here in our state and also throughout throughout the country. Um, if you haven't been to Waffle House, Waffle House is a great, it's an eating experience. Yes, you've been there. Uh, the one thing you might not know is what Waffle House is really bad at is making waffles. <laughs> you don't go to Waffle House for waffles. Um, and they don't serve poutine. So for my Canadian friends, uh, the nearest place that I've been able to find that you can get poutine from here is 10 hours away when you cross the border back in Windsor, straight up I-75. <laughs> And so my goal for us today as a, as a learning community, as we, as we come together to grow and learn, uh, I think about this, I'm an elementary guy at heart, and so what is it that I could possibly share with colleagues that are middle school, that are high school, and even postgraduate? And so I think we all have a lot to learn and grow uh, from one another, and I think that's what makes this community uh, really, really special. Uh, so in 2003, uh, I moved down here, just a little bit of background about me, in 2003 I actually, immig uh, not immigrated, but I moved down here to Georgia. And you might be wondering, like, how does a Canadian end up in, in Atlanta, Georgia? And like most Canadians, uh, I met my wife on the dating website FarmersOnly.com. <laughs> Not really, she's going to kill me for saying that publicly. <laughs> but there's a real story behind that, and probably a more, uh, better time to share that story. But uh, in 1984, this is, a, this is my third grade class. Uh, please recognize the diversity of, of my class back in Canada. 
really, really different. But when I moved here in 2003 and started teaching in 2004, uh, this was the class that I was teaching. And so when I listened to Grace's talk yesterday, it spoke volumes to me. Coming from this teaching here, it really opened my eyes and it just... So I, you know, I could sit here and listen to Grace talk over and over and over again. I'm still, my brain's still rattled after the first three or four slides from yesterday. I still need to comprehend and digest the other 70 slides that she had. But yeah, this is my class. And so I think about how I would teach uh, these students in a third grade class. Uh, I give them a problem like this. Demetrius has 17 Skittles, which is 12 fewer than Alicia. How many Skittles does Alicia have? Uh, turn and tell the person next to you how many Skittles Alicia has. Pretty simple, right? It's not a trick question. I, I, I promise you that. Like, oh, some of you are already, like, if you're hearing me for the first time, you're thinking I'm shady. But what my students might do is they would immediately go and look up at this keyword, problem-solving poster that's up on the wall. Uh, they're prevalent in elementary schools, whether you're in Canada, whether you're in the United States. Uh, they're everywhere. And so students follow this roadmap. And so I wouldn't lie to my students. So this roadmap's up there. Uh, the kids go ahead and circle uh, the, the necessary numbers, underline the question, box the keywords, and eliminate the unnecessary information. The next right after that, they go right next door to the keyword poster. And if you're in middle school, you're saying that's where all the problems are coming from. <laughs> all your problems happen because of, uh, of me and my colleagues in elementary school. But where do you see fewer here? As addition, as addition, uh, sorry, as subtraction. You would never see it. So what do kids do? They take those two words, follow the keyword poster, the road map to the treasure, and they get five. And the first thing that comes to mind is you think this. <laughs> like, what's that five? Where are you getting that five from? We're at a Christian school, people. Get your minds out of the gutter. And so we wonder what's happening here, and this happens repeatedly over and over and over again. And so we go to the internet, and obviously it's research-based, everything we find on the internet, and not a single poster out of thousands of them have fewer as an addition strategy. So in 2010, uh, I, grew up, I, I, I kind of changed roles, and, uh, and I started working with this group right here. Uh, one, of the persons, one of the people in this picture is actually here, uh, Janice is here. Um, this is her first TMC. I'm not going to ask her to stand up. She is uh, too shy to wear the shy button. <laughs> but she has had an, uh, a monumental impact on me, not only as an educator, but also as a human being, as have all the other people here. So what I've tried to do is surround myself. My first lesson that I've learned is if I want to grow and learn and help my kids, is I need to surround myself around people that are smarter than myself. Picture that in like a Derek Zoolander voice. I need to surround myself around people that are smarter than myself. <laughs> and so I try to make sure that I'm the dumbest person in the room, and in this room, it's not that difficult. <laughs> but what they had me do is they, they allowed me to begin to see mathematics differently and the way that it should be taught. Uh, so I'm going to ask you a quick little question here. You need a, you need a pencil and a piece of paper here. I'm going to ask for you to write something down for me. Okay. Oh, So here we go, uh, a circle. I'm going to ask you, uh, what is your gut check? I'm going to give you about 10 seconds here. I would like for you to know, in 10 seconds, I'd like for you to have something written down on your piece of paper. How long would it take for you to draw one billion circles? Go ahead. What's your gut check? What's a gut check? So like, Tracy Zager does a beautiful job talking about student intuition. And so when you wonder, like, when you see one billion circles, like, what's your intuition? What does that tell you? What, what's your, like, your gut? Immediately your gut says it'll be about this. Uh, share it with the person that's next to you. Draw 100 circles in a minute. 
just just figuratively say, let's say you could do that. Um, it would take you just a little over 19 years to draw 1 like sleep. billion circles. You would do 144,000 circles in a day, which would take 6,944 days, which is 19 and a little bit years. And this blew my mind. But what those people did, as I stand on the shoulders of giants, and the, the, the group that allows me to, to learn and grow from them, is they told me that size matters. It really does. But what they had me do is, like, for instance, here's, here's an example. So when we look at 824, how many of us in class would call this 824? But when you call it 824, you're undermining place value. The very thing that many middle school and high school students struggle with. So even if you wouldn't, like, when you call that, you want to make sure you're calling it 824. So then again, you're not undermining the very thing that you're battling for. So in, in, in March 2002, I joined Twitter and entered into this beautiful world of uh, the map Twitter blogosphere. And I went out to TMC. And as I was out at TMC, there was this amazing group of people that I met for the very first time. Some of you can probably see yourself there. Uh, but there'll be more pictures from this one that'll be shared at future TMCs. And so just by a show of hands, like this, this stuck out to me as an elementary person uh, where I work, and it's resonated in my mind for many years. And so that purple circle hurt, because there's amazing things happening in this community, and we have to do a better job getting more elementary teachers involved into this community. Elementary school teachers see themselves as generous, but if you teach math, you are a math teacher. So I just want to kind of just show a quick show of hands here. If you are an elementary school teacher, can you, uh, or you work in that capacity, can you raise your hand so we can kind of see? Uh, yeah. That's not so you've actually doubled in two years. There's about 12 of us. Uh, just by a show of hands, how many of you are middle school teachers here? Just a show of hands. Uh, okay. Uh, high school teachers? Uh, in some kind of capacity as coaching, maybe? And then as others. So it, we're increasing, and so thinking about this, how are we doing a better job inviting people outside of our circle? And I think Tracy did a beautiful job talking about that at last year's keynote. Um, something that I can think about is, is a session that Joe and I did yesterday. We had high school people, so I know uh, Jed came and hung out with us, and we're learning from Jed, and that was amazing for Jed to show. Uh, Ken also came and hung out with us. So to have like-minded colleagues from different grade bands working. So just something to think about as we go back to our districts. So that stuck out to me. Uh, but then when you're there and you go out for eating, like you go out to eat, you have all these different people from all these different walks of life, different regions of the, com of the country coming together. So there was an In-N-Out Burger. There was the beautiful dinner put on by the, uh, the classroom chefs and by our good friends over at Math Delicious. Lots of times to collaborate and just grow and learn from one another. But then there was this here. Uh, Joe threw this up on Twitter. Like, nowhere in uh, life would it be okay for a 37-year-old white fat kid and a 54-year-old Jewish man to be sharing a room and it be okay except for in this community. Which is a great thing because it says we're very welcoming in this community. And what makes it even better is that you have a beagle that goes ahead and just says, stop it, guys. So Joe and I, we appreciated that. So the next year, we asked Beagle if we could stay at her house, and she said no. <laughs> so we got to stay in the dorms at all <laughs> It was great. <laughs> yeah, let that one simmer for a minute. <laughs> But we get to play with pentagons. We got to play with pencils, and I still don't know what this is, Edmund, but I love it, and it's beautiful. I watched Max and Melky play with this for hours. I think I was stalking them, sitting there, watching them play, and listening to how people talk and appreciate each other's thinking. It's a beautiful thing when we do it. But then if you ever want to know what a bunch of teachers look like walking to a bar, we're <laughs> compliant. We stand in a straight line, single file. Nobody's walking on the road. We are a safe community. But every time I leave TMC, I think about reflection time. And so I think I see this color. Uh, what does this color mean to you? Like, where have you seen this color in, in your world, in your life? Uh, talk to the person that's next to you for uh, for 10 seconds. Where would you see this color? Thank you. 
him, but you get his name. Almost the same color as GMC uses. The deep blue of Lake Tahoe. Lake Tahoe is almost that color. To that blue, where would you see this? These two colors side by side. Where would you see this? I heard somebody say it. It's beautiful. It's blockbuster. And so when I think about Blockbuster, it kind of relates to me and TMC. And how does Blockbuster and TMC uh, relate to me as an elementary school teacher? And so you might not know this, but Blockbuster was offered in 2000 to buy Netflix for $50 million. And they didn't. So when they went bankrupt, they were $1.1 billion in debt. They lost that and they were only valued at $24 million. Today, Netflix is valued at $13 million. $13 billion. Size matters. Size matters. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And so, what I can't help but think is how Blockbuster didn't look to, to adapt, to become a better suited to survive in an environment. And so this brings me to my second lesson that, I, that I've learned in this community. And what I can't help but think is how Netflix adapted and Blockbuster stayed static. And I can't help but think Netflix is you, TMC, the mid boss, and Blockbuster is me. You don't allow me to stay static. What you do is you bring me to you and continue to push, challenge, and change me. And that's our second lesson that I've learned from you as a community. The third lesson that I've learned is being vulnerable. This word really, really scares a lot of us. So vulnerable is someone who is capable of being physically or emotionally wounded. And when I think about this word, I think about it, but it really gets a bad rap. Some of the best learning experiences that I've had as a teacher is when I've made myself vulnerable. Like when I sat at that throne of commitment and I realized I've made myself extremely vulnerable. But I find that when I make myself extremely vulnerable, you, the mint boss, comes out of nowhere. <laughs> or it might be that too, but we'll talk about that on a different day. <laughs> and so here we are at, at TMC awesome. 17. Uh, so I've kind of shared three lessons that I've learned along my way uh, to getting to where I am today as, as, a, as an educator and, and as a teacher. And so I was uh, anticipating uh, the keynote for most of it to be like this, and I would have said, the crowd was huge, it was big, it was massive, you should have even seen it. I think you've heard that before from somebody who likes to lie about crowds. But yeah, so you have this crowd here, and Jason had no choice because Lisa told him to come and watch the keynote, but thank you for coming because it means a lot to me that you're all here to listen to an elementary person uh, for a couple minutes. Look at this 65%. Where would you think of 65%? Like, what does this, how does this relate to you as a, as a teacher? Turn and talk to the person next to you for a minute. Go ahead. In an Algebra 1 class, in my district, 65% of Algebra 1 kids fail. At least one of the two semesters. That's horrible. Higher for algebra two. It makes me sad. So let's bring it back. How much weight I want to lose? So both my uh, my wife and I are both educators. She's a kindergarten slash first grade teacher. I'm just scared. I'm uh, as I said, I'm an elementary person, but this this number scares us. It freaks us out when we saw it. How many of you in this room have a, have a little significant person in your life, whether it be son, daughter, niece, nephew, grandchild, that is under the age of 10, or 10 or below? Every single one of us. This number should be freaking you out as well. And let me explain why. Uh, last year, the World Job Reports came out, and what they said is that I have a, we have two daughters. We have a second grader going into a fifth, and also a fifth grader. When our second grader graduates high school, 65% of the jobs that exist when she graduates don't exist today. 
And so here it is, 65% of the children entering primary school today will ultimately end up working in completely new types of jobs that don't exist today. When we went to school, we didn't go to school to be social media marketers, website designers, something to really think about. And so how can we begin to bridge this gap and push our students? And so I can't help but think about how things have changed. This is our, our good friend, many of you uh, know Mark Garneau. Uh, this is Mark Garneau on a saw, on a seesaw here. And so this point really got stuck out to, to my wife and I when we thought about a seesaw and then our daughters got to play on a seesaw that they get to play on. my youngest daughter harder. She's, uh, there she is, eight feet in the air. Push harder. Push harder. But we grew up in a seesaw world, and this is the world that our kids are growing up in. And so uh, I want to share lessons one through three that I've already shared with you. They've allowed me to look at math differently and present math differently. So I want to share two problems. One that we might encounter in fifth grade, and then another that we might encounter in uh, kindergarten. So let's uh, it's a math conference. Let's uh, dive in and do some math here. Uh, today, and I was really uh, thinking about what type of math could push this room. And, and I was thinking the surface area of an apple. Uh, I don't think there's a formula for the surface area of an apple. Uh, I don't think so. Uh, Edmund or Sam, if there is, please correct me now and let me just forward on. But uh, yeah, let's take a look here. Gut check. How long is the apple peel going to be? Talk with the person that's next to you. Go ahead. How long? Uh, 20 feet. 75 feet. Say 20 feet. Too high, too low. zero and 15 inches. Once that apple is completely peeled, you think it's going to be between zero and 15 inches. Uh, between 16 and 30 inches. Six plus? Uh, between 31 and 45 inches. Uh, 46 and 60. 60 and 75. Uh, I'm just ballparking here, yeah. <laughs> That's not a lie, I'm estimating your estimates here. Uh, 76 to 90. Say 60. It looks like I actually counted. Um, and greater, or greater than 90. Greater than 90. Perfect. So we all have uh, some commitment here. One of the things that I've learned is when taking estimates uh, with elementary students, uh, probably any, any grade for that matter, is uh, it allows everybody to dive in. I think that's why we do it. We allow kids to get invested in problems. 
Uh, but what I'd normally do is I would ask students, I'd say, hey, what's your estimate? What's your estimate? And begin to ask kids what their estimates are, and that's painful for everybody involved. And so what I found is by using this range, it now becomes a safer place for kids. So like, let me explain. If you think that it's between 46 and 60 inches, um, and it's not the answer, you're a loser, but you have 49 friends. <laughs> and that's a really safe place for kids. We're not calling out individual numbers here, we're putting kids together. And when kids are wrong, it, it's a little bit more of an acceptance if they have another colleague that is like them. So just something to think about, like unintentionally calling kids out by asking every kid individually for, uh, for their estimate. So uh, let's dive in. There, there's some things that you probably need to know now, um, and I don't think that there's any, as we share, mathematical formula to solve this problem, but uh, what information might you need to know? Just kind of call some things out for me here. What might you need to know? Pardon me? The original piece? Okay. Thanks, Courtney. What else? The width, the width of the apple, okay? The width of, okay, I can give you that piece. It's, uh, it's about a quarter inch, approximately, a, qu a quarter inch. What else might you need to know? The width of the apple, like how the diameter All right, I can give you that piece. So now you know the width of the apple. You know the height of the apple. Welcome to Georgia Apples, yeah. So now you know the width of the peel, you know the, the height, and you know the width. I'm going to give you uh, give you a couple minutes here to kind of chew on this with the people that are at your table. Go ahead. Estimate now. Just talk, talk to people about your team. Go ahead. Not good. That's the longest one. That's pretty long. Uh, I still feel like six feet. Um, so I think if there was one inch, if that was one seventy, yeah. So my original 110 feet was probably over the Oh, see, it's about, that's the 
smaller than the, the circumference of the map of the smallest point in time. I didn't do it with my plan. No, I didn't have it. I missed it. But to be honest, but if it's only for one free round, then then I can just try to unfold the field for a round table to be able to sleep on the field and hike to the spot to be able to be your numbers, you, you've kind of worked out some things, and I know if, uh, if you're a, a middle school or high school teacher, you're like, wow, they don't do circumference in, uh, in elementary school. So one of the things that we'll do is, is we'll talk about handle turns. And so it's about making the mathematics accessible for students. They don't deal with circumference, but we can just tell them that the fattest part of the apple is A 